Alrighty, monthly trading recap for the month of May here in 2022. So Christ be the glory in all of it. Obviously, one of the hardest PL months that I have ever taken in my trading career. But um, gosh, yeah, it's, it's so, even with these monthly recaps, it's so hard for me to do this because, of course, where my brain is at, I'm always thinking constantly about the future. And it's just like, okay, I'm going like way too far back to look at all this stuff and dealing in it. But there is valuable, huge insight always in everything that I've done in the past and be able to learn from it and just even to look at those charts in themselves of what I was doing back then. Obviously, nothing this month was equities whatsoever. Everything here was automated algorithmic futures trading on the S&P 500 through the modalities of ES and MES. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, I think this is really the first time I've done that just solely – not even touching any equities, really. I think I just maybe took small micro scalps once or twice here and there, less than $100 size sometimes um, on some just little speculative guess. I knew I was taking some mental trades as well at some points here uh, on some equity plays that nothing produced of those. But yeah, main focus with this month specifically was that futures automated trading strategy based on the back-tested Excel data sheet that I have collected and started to continually refine more and more, put more time and invest uh, more logistical influence on just to get a better ease of access to say, hey, what's happening in the market? I'm not trying to look at it in the sense of, hey, can I be discretionary in the S&P 500 in this index and try to trade that way? I kind of got drawn to the futures because of the idea of, oh my gosh, one point, you're telling me one point is $50 worth of movement? That's like, I don't even have to like push anything hard, I can just be there for a tiny little move and hey, that's an awesome little P&L on the day that can build my account slowly that way. So lured into the world of futures in that aspect, but of course, finding out it is the double-edged sword that it truly is. That is just trading in general. It is that double-edged sword. It can absolutely profit you up, but in that same breath, it can absolutely wipe you away. I don't feel defeated in the slightest with this month of course with this heart the biggest red day here the biggest uh, elephant in the room is this the 24th day the 7k loss day there even in that day in that loss i knew what was going on and everything that i was doing that day that entire day worked to the parameters that i set for it like if, if i had the account size that was the hic biggest hiccup in that specific day didn't have the account size and that was the mistake i made of taking that size of position on that trade knowing not knowing that I wasn't going to be able to handle that unrealized P&L to be able to see it profit to the upside that was my mistake on that thought I had learned those lessons in the months of February and March as I was just getting into starting in this world of futures but obviously needed that reminder that I can't get so that one specifically was the very, very small little kind of microscope, I want to call it, two, three points at the start of the full session of the futures that consistently, like a 98, 99%, even on like the 20 and 50 day uh, back tested average, I mean, this thing had a 100% profit opportunity of if it was hitting consistently, we were getting at least a minimum of two points above where the session opened for the futures. So just playing off of that, of using that strategy as it was consistently hitting over and over again. And starting in, I think, a few days back in the month of April there. And then, of course, just keeping the same little bit of a smaller size through this first week of May, through the second week of May. I'm going, okay, yeah, I, I find the validation here. And I'm liking the strategy. Everything is working out kind of beautifully here. Okay, I'm, now I'm feeling a little bit stupid to be not having taken the larger size. So then it's that point that... Okay, now I really want to start moving some of my money around, get a beefier account in this futures ninja trader account to be able to then take a larger size to be able to handle the unrealized losses. Okay, let's start doing that. Starts hitting pretty nicely. Of course, I think one of the first days that it started was around this 17th here, this Tuesday. And of course, just like I did it on that March, when I first want to start sizing up to the full ES size, then of course I take the huge loss and it kind of disrupts my little flow. But sure enough, we work back around that and get back above get back above profitable of what I put into that account. Um, then Monday we start off um, the I'll just say the location of what I think the futures of how this trading view um, yeah trader view how this uh, trader sync uh, this actually is of how it puts the p l for the days there is kind of a little bit wonky of course it's having profits on Sunday when I'm not actually trading I'm actually taking the profits on Monday uh, but if they, if those trades end up clearing themselves on Sunday when this 
the Monday session opens, then of course it counts that as a trade. So then the trade numbers are also weird in that too. I'll just mention um, here, but um, I forgot my train of thought of that. Of like, yeah, it's <laughs> it just gets in this role of this the market isn't easy. The tr trading isn't easy, and even though what I have found in this little making my own Excel spreadsheet and kind of playing this non-discretionary view of the overall market, there still is plenty of danger. And of course, taking ev this is the huge awakening that I knew beforehand going in that, hey, past results are not indicative of future performance and backtesting is far different than the actual real world and getting filled of getting orders in and just okay, computer malfunctions, the algorithm working out the coding for the NinjaTrader a platform system of all those different things and variables that are just going to continue to play into it. This was my real world awakening. It's not just so easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. I mean, this is just a total, it, I look at this month as a just total learning experience and kind of an opportunity to say, Hey, the strategy and everything that I was doing and what I'm still looking at and doing currently, there's still validity to it. I feel and It's not so, I love it because it's not like I'm looking I have to be, okay, it has to be this profit target here to the upside here, or I have to play it short here, blah, 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 what, whatever the parameter I define. I am totally able to float and flow and have just a little bit of amount of discretion to say, okay, I kind of want to take a little bit of a smaller size because the 20 day is saying that it's not so much of a huge factor here for this specific trade to play out or uh, the vice versa of, hey, the 20 day is saying this is actually a high or hot hitting pattern. Hey, maybe this one would start to develop. Let's see if it starts to bleed into the 50 day a little bit more saying that it's a more of a structured or kind of a looking like a longer term trade potential profit opportunity using those kind of three variables as an opportunity to say, how much confidence do I have in this specific thing happening today? And then playing off of that. And so being able to dial in and adjust based off of more sentiment like that versus just the all time data, like back to 2012 data, that's so much harder to read and so many, so many more different market ecosystems that it's gone through in those years um, compared to, hey, it's not about what happened on average since the inception of the markets. You know, that's what my Roth IRA is for, to play the long term game for that. This is about, hey, what is the current market saying about opportunity in the most volatile times of the market? And that 930 to 945 open window in the 345 to close window in the full session wide strategy futures based is there something that's showing itself that's saying hey this is kind of happening over and over again or hey even though it's not a hundred percent hit rate probability the times it doesn't hit it's kind of very small and minuscule hey we could still play off that as well and find a little profitable strategy that's what i'm going after just especially in these summer months of for whatever I'm banging my head against and just still not finding the profitability on the equity side and the small caps in the OTC sector, the OTC sector especially, just like shoot your brains out. I don't even want to touch you. But being able to step into this realm and kind of still keep my focus and leg foot in the door with day trading and being a part of making passive income work for me, still being able to have this opportunity is still keeping me very involved in enriched in the understanding of what money is and how I will continue to find it with its relationship with myself and my relationship to it going forward in the future. And not that I'm completely abandoning trading as I probably normally would have if I didn't have uh, any equities or small cap tradings kind of right now, especially as we go into these June and July months here for um, summer. But yeah, my brain's kind of going scatter place. I think this, having this opportunity for the futures is still keeping me involved and still found myself a niche to say it wasn't so like hard focus of just like, oh, I have to make money in this right here right now that I kind of gotten a little bit of a, a bad groove with with the equity side of it that I was just kind of trading every day, even though in the back of my mind and especially in hindsight, I knew there was an opportunity every single day. But this is, of course, I'm trading it every single day, but it's still not so much trying to produce money every single day. It's saying, Hey, this is an opportunity that's happening. Of course, it's just kind of subsequent that I have to be a part of it every single day. And, um, that's just how it works out. So <laughs> yeah, reflection of this month, it's sure looks like a heck of a lot more green days than red days, but of course one hard red day can absolutely destroy your month. And, um, especially as I talked about in one of the past daily training recaps of seeing Kyle Williams, his may recap of, of course he's hundred K in the green 
just that little bit of frustration that I feel, of course, especially after the hard little account hit that I took with this month, but of just the other mindset as well, too, of, man, he's looking at charts that I was just not even looking at or aware of. And of course, he's taking trades and making money that I was just not even seeing on any of my scanners or looking up in my study and research. And so obviously, there's always going to be opportunity. And that's, I can look at that in one light to say that's another great incentive to say there's always opportunity to make money and there's still definitely far more to this game than I just limit myself to. But that's another thing that I have to add to that perspective of, man, I, t I am taking a lot of screen time off in these, in this month of May and I will be going forward in June, July, especially as I'm stepping into this real world job to <laughs> slowly pad back up this account. Once again, um, yeah, taking that into account that I'm not spending that much time in front of the screen, f I feel for my own benefit of just not trying to force more trades or just get in my own psychotic. I'm just picturing right now the scene from uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia with uh, Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia. There's no Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> that uh, meme of him going crazy with all that mail on the wall. That's the. That's just the automatic thinking that I go to when I say, okay, I'm going to go full time and sit in front of this computer screen and then watch charts. Like that's just, that's how I feel my mind immediately goes to that. I'm, if I do that to myself, then I'm just going to create so much more than is actually there. And I'm just going to try to read into things and pull more things out of it than it truly really is there. So it's, I don't, I feel like I'm on the lower end of that now perspective of like, I'm not really even trying to attempt to put in a hard amount of research time or um, studying time right now into trades or charts for current opportunities. But yeah, it, it that's just where my mind immediately goes that I want to stay away from of just getting myself into this hysteria of like, oh, okay, well, this price ticked here to this candle. And like, I, I'm just reading into way, way more than is there. But that is trading too. It's just such a gray area in everything. It's not like there's a hard to find limit of, hey, I have to show up at this specific time and I have to look at charts for this specific long and then I have to talk about it with other traders for this long as well too and just blah, 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 all these different things. It's it's just such a gray area of time invested, of things looked at, of different variables for trades and the weight that they may have that makes you want to take the trade on in itself. <sighs> I'm getting very off topic and broad spectrum with a lot of this, but that's why I do these monthly recaps is because that's what the daily trading recaps are for is for that specific little day to day breakdown of everything that it is. But I think, yeah, just to wrap it up and try to keep it as short as I want it to be for this month for how much time I do really want to be spending in front of these screens while I'm taking my, a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a breakaway and just kind of continue to keep that perspective fresh in my mind of, this is one tiny hit. This is not going to be anywhere near the biggest loss in my account that I ever take with uh, my day trading going forward. This is just another. Uh, I don't want it to be just another. I don't want it to be meaningless, but I just want to understand, keep in perspective in mind of, hey, kind of this kind of brought me back, but it's not the death of me. I'm still breathing. I'm still alive and well. These numbers on a screen don't define who I am, and that's not what I got into this game for, to be my emotions to be for the day determined by whether a number is red or green on the day. That's not how I want to live my life whatsoever. And I believe that's actually deteriorous to just kind of always be succumbed to whether I have a good day or not, because of if or not, I had a green day. It's just not how I want to live. I want to be financially free and that's everything I'm going after. But de having that healthy detachment from what's going on here to how I live my life and how I hold myself uh, among my family, among my friends in my daily outgoings and profession of the faith. So <sighs> this month, I just totally look as um, I have to just look at the strategy for everything that I was doing and what I was holding myself accountable to as, hey, the strategy, the strategy on this 24th day worked out beautifully, all of it, every aspect of it, all the data points hit where they were supposed to hit. It was just the, okay, I screwed over the I was getting lazy and kind of lackadaisical in managing that. Um, I, maybe a little bit greedy was the better term for that of just kind of because that smaller hit to the upside was just such an immediate and quicker movement from that session open. I felt I could take a bigger size on it because it was just happening immediately and I wasn't having to take the unrealized losses earlier on. The, take on that unrealized P&L early on. So then I got a little bit of greedy, a little bit too comfortable with that and started sizing up more than, you know, if I actually looked at the data, I would say, I cannot take that unrealized, that size of unrealized P&L for what 
it has shown price action can do at times. And especially for the fact of if it did take one a harder realized P&L, if I did take a loss there, man, that would be a huge hit to the account size just in general. Um, even though it would, you know, the next few days would have slowly built that account size back up, would that would my account have been stable enough to hold the next unrealized P&Ls for the next few days there um, if it had worked? So, And even through the the larger size profit target downside full session strategy, um, even through the hard two days that it didn't work on this 26th and 27th, which then flipped my data around to say, okay, this is no longer a profitable strategy. Uh, there's just no upside to this trade because of the past two days and for the losses that have incurred because of those in points terms, just in general, um, this strategy is no longer successful. Then that took me away from trading at that. That took me away from trading that strategy, of course, because the data just didn't say it was there. Even through those hard two losses, this still would have been a net profitable strategy if I had taken a similar size from day one. If I had taken an MES size, which I started with at the beginning of this month, that then slowly worked me into, okay, this has been working too well. I need to start taking um, bigger size with this one, even through the loss days. This is still a net profitable strategy. Had I continued to take an MES, if I took an ES contract for this specific, for that down, larger downside profit target on the full session for that strategy, had I taken that size the entire time, I still would be net profitable on the month. It would have, of course, looked a little smaller than maybe where I would have peaked at certain points here and there, but still obviously would have been net profitable. And the 930 and the 345 strategies, beautiful. Even through the losses that I took, I think I actually took one on the 24th as well. Um, 26th and 27th, I think, were also combined maybe some losses in there for those trades. But overall, still on those ones, huge net profitability on those as well. So it's... You know, it's like I can look at this month and say, gosh, this was a hard, this is my hardest red month I've ever had. You know, this is a huge account hitting. I should just, the world, I can totally understand, wants me to kill myself. The stock market and day trading wants me to throw in the towel, just absolutely quit and give up because of these hard losses. But it's, I have to look at it. And this is just how I look at it as that was my own screw up. That was my margin of error slip that got me into there. But it's not killed me whatsoever. I'm still hauling on the trail of something. Like there's still, I still smell that little bit of fire, the little bit of uh, smoke in the air that's just kind of getting me going and still keeping me excited for the future of this. So that is what I'm holding myself to. And that is what this month has just brought out of me. And so for the next few months, definitely as I'm still doing the real world job and kind of slaving away at the nine to five, working for the man, that's going to give, I, I can already feel it in these two days. I can just already feel that that is just ingraining in me such a deeper desire to, this is why I want to do this because I don't want to be slave to that. I want that financial freedom. I don't want to have to do anything. I'm chasing nothing. I want the ability to do nothing if I want to. I want the ability to do something and everything if I want to, but my main goal and objective in all of this in my financial freedom quest is the ability and opportunity to do nothing. I feel like that's every man's quest is just... Gosh, I, the opportunity to do nothing is so sweet. Like that, that's so beautiful. That's what I'm chasing after. So, <sighs> long-winded monthly recap talk, but just totally refreshing. I love being able to talk to the camera and have my psychologist to be able to talk to you um, in these videos, and especially to be able to look at in the future of where I came from and where my headspace was for these specific months in these trades um, in my trading career. And you know, maybe down the line, I hope it helps somebody just to know that, man, this chalked full account of all these, this was the exact journey that I went through. This isn't sugarcoating it. This isn't a, a adjusted biography in hindsight. This is just the real day-to-day, month-to-month, um, total laying out of everything that happened. And that's the reason why I do it is so I can still have the fresh memory and the wounds of everything that happened and still have the um, current mindset and everything that I'm doing with these um, specific in moment opportunities for these videos that way. So I hope that makes sense. That's just <laughs> clearing the table, clearing my head, uh, clearing the account, getting ready uh, for tomorrow. That's just what I'm here. As long as I still got money in the account, as long as I still got 50 bucks to trade a uh, micro ES contract, there's still opportunity to trade. So that's, that's all I'm chasing after day by day. I thank you guys for watching. We will catch you guys on the next one.